everyone! So happy Halloween month! I know that this is the first kind of spooky video that I'm doing this month but um, I've been really unwell for like, two weeks of October. I had like a migraine that lasted forever and I was just in the dark in my room for like 16 days. Yeah so that was fun. So obviously I couldn't make or edit any videos during that time which is why you only just got the birthday haul. I'm feeling much better now so I really need to try and make up for lost time because I really was so looking forward to making lots of spooky videos this October so I'm definitely going to try and still get a few in for this year. So anyway, onto the topic of this video which I'm sure is very obvious by now but I'm going to be doing some pumpkin carving. So this is my big pumpkin. I've never carved such a big pumpkin in my life. I've only done little tiny ones and I was going to get some little ones from the shop as well but they didn't have any. They only had the big ones. I'm going to start drawing on my design and I thought I would pick a spooky topic for this video to talk about with you guys while I'm doing the pumpkin carving. I was thinking obviously we want to do something like spooky Halloween themed and stuff. So I have a few kind of both strange stories and also possibly paranormal and it all takes place in like the same house that I used to live in so I thought I'd tell you like spooky stories from living in that house. I will start explaining this house. As you may or may not know because I've mentioned it a few times in the past on here but I used to live in New South Wales only for about a year but I lived there with my mum and we lived in like a little old farmhouse. It was actually a cottage and it was kind of in the middle of nowhere. It was like an hour away from any shops. I think our only neighbours were like two farmers down the road and then we had like a bunch of cows next to us in a big paddock. I'll see if I can find some photos of this cottage. I definitely have some. I probably even have a video actually from a vlog that I did ages ago when we went back there to visit so I'll see if I can find it. So this cottage I think it was over a hundred years old and yeah as I said it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. I guess there's a few people scattered around. I think there was like one community community I think that was what it was called like down the road and then there was the two farmers and I think that was it so yeah we had a lot of strange things happen in that house so during the day it was like such a beautiful place to be there was so much nature and I just remember like the sunlight that streamed in through the windows every morning and I had my cat Rao Rao then and it was just oh the good old days but it was like really beautiful and wonderful and lovely <laughs> during the day but then as soon as the sun would set and it would get dark it's like the whole atmosphere would just change completely and it happened every day or every night I guess and you could kind of feel it. My mum described it really well she said it's kind of like there's this veil that comes over everything at night time and I guess you know there was some stuff that contributed to the atmosphere as well like whenever it was night time all the bugs ever <laughs> would come inside and they would just be everywhere they would like cover the ceiling it would be encrusted with all these beetles and roaches and like just bugs all these different bugs and they would dive bomb you and stuff and it was a little bit much and then like frogs and stuff would come in which is kind of fine like I like frogs and I used to like rescuing them when they came in so that was okay um, and like giant spiders and stuff would be in the bathroom and that was one of the things that would change and obviously that's just the place that we lived in nothing paranormal about that but it adds to the atmosphere and so then also it was at night time that we would experience the really weird weird shit and it was usually when we would go to bed that it would happen so this also happened when we had friends staying over with us for a little while they'd notice the same thing and they'd be like what on earth was going on last night like what was all that noise I could have sworn I heard footsteps and someone knocking on the door were you guys out at all during the night in the house and we're like no that wasn't us that happens all the time and we do not know what it is. I guess I'll just jump straight to the big scary story. But before I do that, I think I'll show you my design really quick. And then I'll start gutting the pumpkin. I don't know if you can see it because I used an orange sharpie because I don't want it to show up if like I don't cut it out perfectly. But I did, of course, a raven. I don't think you can see it, but it's a raven with some mushrooms. I don't think you can see it. I'm coming back to the story but I just want to explain stuff. I've got my old pumpkin carving tools from 
last year, so I don't know if they're going to really work for this massive pumpkin, but these are the only ones that are available in the shop, so if these don't work I'll have to get a knife, but yeah, I've got these. Oh, also, this video is all over the place. I got these two Halloween tea lights from years ago that I've had saved up, so they're quite perfect to go in there. And then this is put the pumpkin guts in. Oh, also, really quick, I forgot to mention I wanted to show you my pumpkin that I carved last year for Halloween. In the vlog that I did last Halloween, I was joking about how like maybe I should preserve one of the carved pumpkins, and I decided to. He looks like a scary old man. He's lost all his colour and he's like all wrinkly and gross. And I had to put rocks in him so that he didn't tip upside down. <laughs> it's a bit freaky, but that's okay. I just wanted to share him with you. <laughs> yeah, so this this cottage, this spooky spooky cottage that we lived in. So these like weird occurrences at night happened like weekly. I'd say like every other day it would happen. When I say day I mean night but day sounds like it makes more sense. I guess we were used to it but also that's not to say it wasn't still scary because it was. Like hearing someone walking around in your house that you can't see but you can definitely hear them. I don't know, it's just, it's really intimidating. So the most scary incident that we had with whatever was in that house, which I think was more than one thing, was one night, this was just when it was me and mum, we didn't have any friends or anything over. We went to bed as usual and we heard the usual like footsteps and banging and stuff around in the house that wasn't either of us but it seemed to go for like a bit longer than usual and it was definitely one of the scarier nights that we had that happen. Anyway so the next morning everything seemed normal but then my mum went into the kitchen and she called out to me and I came to her and she's like Scarlett do you know anything about this? Was this you? And I looked on the kitchen floor and every single sharp knife that we had was out of the drawer. The kitchen drawer was left open and all of the knives were on the floor and they were arranged from biggest to smallest just on the floor. Like, what the fuck? Oh, oh my god, I still have that image burned into my brain. It was just terrifying. Like, that is one of the most scary spooky ghosty things that has ever happened to me aside from the shadow man in my dad's room and I have told this story before on YouTube but that was years and years ago like when I was still making webcam videos <laughs> I'll have to double check because there's so many incidences that sometimes I get them like a bit mixed up in my head like the different details but um, I'm pretty sure like all the doors and windows and everything of the cottage were still like shut and locked and stuff how do I get this out I swear I'm coming back to the story, I know I've left it very on edge, <laughs> cliffhanger. Maybe I need to just store at it some more, I don't know. I need this lid to come out. Oh by the way, do you like my makeup? I was trying to do some kind of jack-o'-lantern inspired thing and I couldn't decide whether or not to do my nose, like the, the black bits, but I decided against it. Sometimes I make those decisions and it turns out to be really dumb and I've like ruined the whole look, so I didn't really want that to happen. Oh, it's a bit looser. Oh, I'm so close. Uh, ouch. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yes. I got the lid off. Actually, do I need a spoon? <sighs> okay, I'm going to use my awesome rainbow spoon for this. Alright, so, as I was saying, we've got Halloween makeup. I was talking about the cottage. Ah, oh, what else? Scary knives on the floor. Yeah, I guess I'll just go back to that. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. I've never had anything <laughs> quite like that happen to me before. Yeah, I still don't know what it was. Like, I guess, you know, I can't say with absolute certainty that it was paranormal. I think it was because it's really weird how all the doors and stuff were still shut. I don't know. But, I don't know, maybe there was a ninja there or something. I. I've really got no clue. I actually still think about it often and I'm like just how is that possible and who would it be? It just doesn't make any sense. I guess, I don't know, could like someone sleepwalked or something? I don't think I've ever done any sleepwalking in my life but I 
guess that's a possibility. Someone could have sleepwalked into the kitchen, opened the drawer, put all the knives on the floor in the correct order, and then gone back to bed. I guess that's something. I highly doubt it, but there you go. So, next weird story. This, I used to think, just because I was like really young, I was like 14 when we lived in this cottage, I used to think that this was paranormal or like, I didn't think it, I guess I just wondered about it a lot and whether it was a ghosty thing or something, but looking back, I don't think it was at all. But anyway, it's it goes with the weirdness of the place, so I'm going to tell it to you. So every now and then, it was like maybe every month or every few months or something, we always had the same kid turn up at our back door. It was always the back door, never the front door, I don't know why, but he always seemed like really a bit confused and like not fully there, like a bit out of it or something. He was definitely a teenager, but he always came asking for the same thing. He wanted someone to drive him into town, which again was like at least an hour away, and would say like, where did you come from? And he'd say, I don't remember exactly where it was that he said, but it was some town that was ages away. You wouldn't be able to walk to this cottage from that town that he said that he'd come from. So usually my mum would give him some food and some water and direct him to like one of the farmer's houses. Blackstar, what are you doing? I'm trying to tell spooky stories. It's not playtime. <laughs> He's dragging one of his toys in here. Blackie, what are you doing, mate? You got your yellow one now. That's seven toys that you've gotten out of your toy box. You don't even like that toy. You never play with it. Huh? As I was saying. So he was always asking for the same thing. And it was always a weird request because... Uh, no, we can't drive him into town. It's hours away. And it was always like evening or night time when he came as well. Which was a really inconvenient time to be giving someone a lift that would take so long. And so I... <laughs> always wondered because I was like where on earth did this kid come from I don't understand and why is he like asking such weird questions and being so obscure and saying that he's come all this way from his aunt's house which is like hours away and that he did it by foot what is going on <laughs> it definitely wasn't anything ugh, paranormal but in my naiveness when I was 14 I thought maybe maybe he's either a ghost or he keeps getting dropped off by aliens. Those were my theories, but actually I think he probably came from one of the nearby, or not one of the only, like little nearby community thing. I don't know what it was officially called. And I think he was probably like on something because he always seemed a bit out of it and stuff, so he was probably like high or something. I don't know. It's not that spooky, but it is just weird, like it was strange. And that he always came to our house, I didn't really understand that. Because he didn't want to go to the farmer's house, he only wanted to come to ours, so... Yeah, strange. This is gross. What is it, Blackstar? He's pumpkin! He's pumpkin guts! The wildlife there was kind of crazy. So, obviously, New South Wales. Well, it's a lot more tropical there than it is in South Australia, that's for sure, so... Lots of, like, frogs and toads and stuff every night. There'd be quite a few cane toads. Outside, black star must you. There were like cane toads and stuff, and because we had a bathroom that was like a separate building to the cottage, we had to go outside to get to the toilet. And so at night, we'd have to like navigate through all the cane toads that were outside between the cottage and the bathroom. And then sometimes it would be like cane toads in the bathroom when we're trying to pee and stuff. Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> My cat loves plastic and he thinks it's a game to try and eat my feet through the plastic. Also, snakes! Oh my god, the snakes! So we had two snakes in our house when we were there. There was one that tried to get through, not really a crack, it was like a little gap that was in the wall and we'd see like a little snake nose sticking out wanting to come in so we had to stuff the gaps up with bubble wrap so that snakes wouldn't come in because it kept trying to come in like over days or weeks every now and then it would come back and see if it could like fit through so we had to fix that and then another time a snake was in our kitchen and it was like wrapped around the door handle and exploring the kitchen and so we couldn't go in there obviously and it was night time I think or it was evening it was getting dark so 
we had to kind of deal with the situation ourselves. So we ended up lighting a bunch of incense and my mum has some of those brass singing bowls I think they're called. So we had the incense going and then the brass bowl and we kind of directed all of that at the snake. Nothing like cruel of course, it was still a few metres away from us but that managed to get it to slither away back outside so we could use the kitchen again. <laughs> so I can't remember what kind of snake that was, it was probably like was it a carpet python or something? I don't know. Are those even in Australia? I have no idea. What other strange stories do I have from that house? Actually one of the times, like one of the nights that we had weird bumps and footsteps and stuff, when we were all in bed we heard someone knocking on the front door. Obviously no one went out there because we were all too scared, but then the next morning the door was actually ajar a little bit. Even though I'm pretty sure we'd locked it and everything, but it was like open about like that much. I guess I'm a bit biased saying that it was paranormal, even though I do think it was. I just think because of the location and everything. I think it was a ghost, but you know. I don't think it was the guy that visited all the time because he always went to the back door. And nothing was like disturbed or anything that night when the whoever it was came into our house. Like everything was normal and the same as we left it except that the door was open. Updating you on the pumpkin. <laughs> I've got as much guts out as I can, uh, so hopefully that is good enough. And now I'm going to start carving out the raven. I don't really know what else to say about the cottage now. I think I'm just going to finish carving this. So we'll speed this up and then I will show you again. I've shared my spooky stories, so if you guys have anything spooky or paranormal or just really strange or hard to explain, feel free to let me know in the comments what it is because I would love, love to read it. I think we should have our own little spooky chat going on down there with each other. I'm just going to have such weird legs. <laughs> Look at this raven! <laughs> it's so weird how he's all round. And he's missing his feet. I don't know if this is going to turn out how I want it to, but I'm going to try. Ooh, no, the middle of the legs came out. I didn't think about that. I'll see if I can try and add that back in after. So it looks, oh my god, it looks so weird now. Alright, now I'm just going to do the mushrooms. What are you doing, Blackstar? Blackstar, do you like my pumpkin so far? Do you like it? He doesn't like it. Let's see you carve a better one, Blackstar. Actually, you probably could, couldn't you? I bent it. Get. Oh my god. I'm so sad. I've messed up the mushrooms. I am having a hard time. <laughs> Hopefully you can't tell that a bit of time has passed. Basically my camera battery went flat so I had to charge it for a bit before continuing with the video. So I didn't get to do the reveal of the pumpkin design. It's a bit of a fail. There's like chunks missing where they're not meant to be missing and it's not great, <laughs> I'm gonna admit. Yeah, but again, this was like my first time doing a giant pumpkin and doing something that isn't just like the classic pumpkin face. I'm kind of feeling like maybe I should have just done the pumpkin face. Wait, I'm gonna stop rambling and I'm just gonna show this to you, so... It's... I don't know, it's not great. It's okay, it might look better when it's lit up, I don't know, but I'm not sold on it, let's be honest. And also, where am I? Down here, that's where the mushrooms were meant to be, but like one of the parts of the pumpkin that would divide them fell out, so it looks like a big mess of blobby shapes. So that's great. Yeah, and the raven, that bit of pumpkin there is just sitting there precariously because it fell out and that we need that so that he has legs. But anyway, I mean, he's okay and it was fun to do, so that's all right. I'll also show you this lit up like in the dark because obviously there's still daylight at the moment, so it won't be the same as if I showed you in the dark, but we'll just have a look now anyway because I want to. 
ouch why it hurts oh yeah it does look kind of cool it might look alright in the dark I think I should have like put the raven up further on the pumpkin and not have it like so low down I think that would have helped but anyway I'll show it to you with the candles oh there it is can you see it I hope you can see it <laughs> so that is that is the pumpkin kind of a fail but it was fun I might buy another one to do even though these pumpkins are a bit expensive I will probably still do another one on Halloween there's my pumpkin in the dark it actually does look a little bit better when it's in the dark and you can see the little mushrooms there I think you can kind of make them out and then of course the big raven he looks a bit disproportionate his tail looks shorter than what it is as well as his wing but yeah and there's his little legs so I think I did maybe a bit more okay than what I thought. There it is. Got anything to say? What's that? Huh? It's a pumpkin. Wow. What is it? You like it? Hmm? But that's it for this video. The pumpkin is done, the candles are in, the stories are told, and it's all finished. And also don't forget to tell me your scary ghost stories if you have any in the comments because I would love to have a chat about spooky things like that. It's quite fun. Yeah, but that's all for me. So happy October. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.